As you remember, from the cell theory, all living things are made of cells. So today we're going to talk about what makes up a cell. So we have two types of cells that we're going to talk about. An animal cell, which is really any shape, usually round, all right? And then a plant cell. All right, now the basic thing to a cell that makes a cell is it has to have a cell membrane. So the cell membrane is the blue, and then this is the inside of the cell membrane of the plant. So both cells, both animal and plant cells, have a cell membrane. Now the next biggest thing is the nucleus. The nucleus controls all cell activities within the cell. Both plants and animals have a nucleus. Now, so if the nucleus is controlling what goes on inside the cell, and the cell membrane is controlling what goes in and out of the cell, there has to be some more components to the cell in order for it to survive. So within the nucleus, there's another organelle called the nucleolus. Now all the things that a plant cell and an animal cell has in common are going to be blue. All right, the, if I have something in a plant cell that's not in an animal cell, it's going to be red. And if it's in an animal cell and not a plant cell, it's going to be brown. So, so far cell we're... membrane controls things going in and out of the cell on both. The nucleus, which controls the cell activities. The nucleolus, which makes ribosomes. And ribosomes are important. And also within the nucleus, we have DNA. Alright, the DNA inside your nucleus is in the form of the chromosomes. Alright, this is, un this is unwound, unwound DNA, so unwound chromosomes. They look kind of like that. So back to the nucleolus. The nucleolus makes ribosomes. Ribosomes can either be free-floating within the cell. Right, the ribosomes make proteins, so ribosomes make proteins. Hooked onto the nucleus is the endoplasmic reticulum. Now the endoplasmic reticulum has two parts. There's a smooth part and a rough part. The rough part is closest to the nucleus, and that has ribosomes on it, so that's why it's rough. So we have some ribosomes. Alright, and now we have a smooth part. So the rough has ribosomes, rough ribosomes, smooth does not. This is both for the plant and animal. Alright, so the endoplasmic reticulum packages things for distribution within the cell. Anywhere inside the cell that the proteins from the ribosomes have to go, the ER packages them and sends them through. This happens in both the plant and the animal cell. Now, also another packaging center within the cell is the Golgi complex. Right, the Golgi complex Golgi complex packages things for distribution outside the cell, so it's kind of like UPS. So if you want to send something outside of your house, you send it through UPS. So the Golgi complex is like UPS. All right, and it packages things in little tiny vesicles and then sends them to the cell membrane where they're expelled through exocytosis. Now surrounding the nucleus, remember, is the nuclear membrane. So we have the nuclear membrane, the nucleus, the chromosomes, and then the nucleolus all within the nucleus. We also have ribosomes, the smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum, and the Golgi complex. The next thing that are in both are the vacuoles. A vacuole is just a storage center. There could be more than one. All right, it's just a storage center within the cell. In a plant cell, it's very large, and it's usually called a large central vacuole, and it's right in the middle. The vacuole stores foods, wastes, uh, different minerals and stuff that have to go for transport. So in a plant cell, it usually stores water. In an animal cell, cell it'll store water and wastes. The last thing that both cells have is the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is all the white space within the cell. There's one more organelle that's found in both the plant and the animal cell, and that's called the mitochondria. The mitochondria is responsible for producing energy within the cell. There's usually more than one mitochondria, 
so that the cell has enough energy. That would be like saying if the United States only had one power plant to power the whole thing. You need to have more than one or else it wouldn't survive. So mitochondria are found both in plants, and here's a plant cell with the mitochondria. So they're found in plants and animals. Let's move on to a plant cell. There's two different things that a plant cell has that an animal cell does not. The first is a cell wall. The cell wall is responsible for structure and support of the cell. It's analogous to our bones. Our bones help hold us up. The cell wall in a plant helps hold the plant up. That's why it can get so large. So we have the cell wall for structure and support. The next thing we have our chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are responsible for producing food for a plant cell. They take in sunlight and through the process of photosynthesis they make energy. So the sun comes in, hits this, electrons get excited and it makes food. The food goes then into the mitochondria, which we'll draw in later. So, we have the cell wall and this, the chloroplasts that are only found in plant cells. In animal cells, we have another organelle that's only found in animal cells, and that's called the lysosome. The lysosome is filled with digestive enzymes that help break down old cells and other dead material within the cell. So, if you have broken down ribosomes. The lysosomes break everything down. Now these are two very basic cells, both the animal and the plant. Cells come in a lot of different shapes and varieties, so this is just your basic. Remember all the blue are the ones that are found in both. The brown is only found in the animal and the red is only found in the plant. And you can tell a plant cell from an animal cell because of its shape. It's usually very square or rectangular and it has a cell wall and chloroplasts. Alright, and those are the basics of cells and their parts and functions.